Hi, I'm Michael Odie, SolarWinds contributor and president and CTO of Tekka Inc. Today we're going to talk about configuring a SQL Server link servers going to Oracle. Let's have a look at what we're going to cover. First, we're going to jump in and we're going to look at an overview of what SQL Server link servers are all about and tell you some of their benefits. Then we're going to dive into some of the configuration details. How do you set these things up? We're going to get into some of the necessary components like installing the Oracle client software on SQL Server. Then we're going to show you how to configure the link server properties. And then finally, we're going to configure a link server itself. And you can see how that's done. So let's jump in. First, this slide gives us an overview of what SQL Server link servers are all about. They basically allow you to perform cross-platform queries and even updates. So for instance, by creating a link server in SQL Server and using this, the Oracle client components, you can have a query on SQL Server bridge over to Oracle and return data to SQL Server. You can even do things like perform joins and other things with uh, tables and, um, and other database objects that are uh, on the Oracle system. So in, in essence, you can treat it almost exactly like it is a, a local database, but it's not. In order for this to happen, though, you need to install the Oracle client software on your SQL Server instance. And so you basically would download the Oracle client from the Oracle uh, site, install it on your SQL Server instance, and that is what's going to basically give you the the network connectivity that you need. And after that, you can go ahead and configure your link servers. You can configure them using SQL Server Management Studio or T-SQL. If we look over here at the diagram, on the lower right-hand side of the screen, you can kind of see what link servers are all about. Basically, when you put in a link server, you're adding an OLEDB provider into the SQL Server uh, process. So for Oracle, it would be the Oracle OLEDB provider. And then when SQL Server gets a, a query request that's directed towards one of the database objects that's defined by that link server, it will then route it down to that OLEDB provider. And then that OLEDB provider will in turn be using the Oracle network libraries to connect into that Oracle system. We'll be accessing the Oracle database as a client and then returning results to your SQL Server system, your queries, and then eventually back to the client application. So that's kind of an overview of how SQL Server link servers work. So how do you install the Oracle client? Well, basically, uh, the, there are a number of different Oracle clients out there, but probably one of the simplest ones to use is the 64-bit data access components. And that is what you see here. And you would go over to oracle.com and you would download this, um, this file. The exact file is listed here. It's called um, ODAC121021 xcopy underscore x64. Uh, like you might guess, there's also a 32-bit version, but I imagine most of you are using 64-bit servers like I am. And once you get this, you would basically download this to your system, you'd unzip it, and then you'd install it. Um, it is a command line install. You basically would want to run this from an elevated command prompt, and you can see an example of doing so here. And in this case, I have uh, unzipped it to my C colon temp directory, and then in that temp directory, fired up an elevated command prompt, ran the install.bat file with the all parameter, which means it's going to install all of the different data access components, and I'm installing them into the C colon Oracle directory. And so that's basically it. It only takes a couple of uh, minutes to do this. And uh, once you've done that, um, the readme file also directs you to uh, modify your path variable. And so you can see that on my environment variables window here on the lower right hand side. I've gone into the path and I've added the c colon backslash oracle, c colon backslash oracle bin directories to the beginning of my path. And this is all done on the SQL Server instance. After that, you can go ahead and set your link server properties. So you can open up Management Studio. Uh, you can expand your link servers node, see your providers, and once this install is, is completed, you'll see a provider named oracle, like you can see here highlighted in red. Right-click that provider, open up its pro provider properties, and be sure to click the Allow in Process option, like you can see here. Next, now that your link server properties are set, 
um, you're ready to go ahead and configure a link server. You can do this using um, T-SQL or uh, SQL Server Management Studio. In this example, I'll use Management Studio. However, when you do these on your own, I like using T-SQL in a production environment because that lets you have a set of scripts that you can easily run and rerun to recreate the link server quite easily. Anyway, in this example though, it, it's a little easier to see it using SQL Server Management Studio. So you basically right click your link servers and then select the new link server option from the context dialog and that'll give you this new link server dialog that you can see here on your general page you give the link server a name and I called it link underscore oracle 12 C it can be any name you want this is basically a descriptive name that your queries on the SQL server side are going to use to identify this link server next in the provider in the provider drop down box select the Oracle provider for OLADB and again that won't be present until you've installed the Oracle data access components on your SQL Server system then it is give it a product name and I've given it the name of the the provider itself and then give it a data source you can identify your data source in a couple of different ways um, Oracle uses something called easy connect and um, easy connect gives you a string basically where you can supply the server name and that's what I've done here you could supply the server name or you could use the IP address um, optionally you can also add the port and the service name but in this case since those are optional I left them off and and provided this a little bit simpler example okay let's go ahead and have a look at our link server uh, first we're gonna go ahead and open up management studio then we're going to go ahead and go into our server objects node and then we're going to expand the link servers and you can see the different providers that are on the systems here and here is the Oracle provider that we installed using the Oracle client installation process and if we look over here quickly onto the onto the C drive we can see you know exactly where we installed the Oracle binaries at and you can see them over here and this is where our provider got installed at right clicking it we can see the properties here and this is where we selected it to be uh, the in process option so it can run in process with SQL Server and that's what you see here with the allow in process box checked and next you can see our provider is configured down here so let's go ahead and look at its properties and here you can see where we have set up the name of link underscore oracle uh, 12c where you've selected the oracle provider and we set the product name and the data source name oh yes and you can go into the properties to set up your authentication to your link server target too using the security page that you can see here um, in this case if you were using um, you wanted to map logins from one system to the other you could add your local logins and your remote logins in the dialog box at the top and if you want to say map all of the logins to a given security context like a, a one remote login over there you could use one of the dialogs at the bottom if you're using Windows authentication you might select be made with the current logins current security context if those window logins were both in SQL Server and on the Oracle system and like I said this bottom one remote login with password say if we were going to the Scott Tiger database the old example we could always specify that here so anyway that's how you can pass the authentication for the link server and if we wanted to we could script this out as well by going script link server and let's say create to and we'll create it to a new query editor window and there's the t-sql for it well that gives us an idea of how to configure uh, link servers using SQL Server Management Studio. Well that's it for SQL Server to Oracle Link Servers Part 1. Here we saw how to configure a link server. Next you'll see how to use that link server and get some tips and tricks of how to take advantage of link servers in the best kind of ways. Thanks for watching.